Jared here at UCLA. Um, I guess about 45 years ago, I uh, did my doctorate in, uh, in neuroscience. Uh, and uh, my entire life, I've looked at the brain, the highest and most complicated uh, organization of matter in the universe. Uh, and wondered how can we understand how this works and what it means and how our mentality emerges from this. Uh, wh what can we learn by looking at the vast diversity of different species and the different nervous systems? Something as simple as the relationship between brain size and uh, species men mentality. What, what can we learn? We humans are obsessed with the importance of the brain because we are distinguished by a big brain. But by looking at the diversity of animal species, we can learn to be, we should learn to be less obsessed with a brain because really big brains are very uncommon um, among mammals. So humans have a large brain, chimpanzees have an enlarged brain, there are some whales that have big brain, but the vast majority of mammal species don't have big brains and the commonest animals on earth, the successful animals are not humans, but the successful animals are the nematode worms, ribbon worms. Uh, they say that if you dissolved all the world and the only thing left were nematode worms, you would have an outline of all the world because nematode worms are everywhere. Yeah. Beetles, rats, they're, they're very successful. So the first thing we learn about brains is that they're rare and they're not that valuable. There are better ways to be yeah. successful. The next thing we learn about brains is that they're extremely expensive. They're a metabolically expensive organ. Maybe 25, 30 percent of the human body's energy is consumed in our brain. A big, big fraction yeah, of it. Right. And that means that if you had some other animal with a smaller brain that was not wasting 25 percent of its energy on, on this brain, it, there, there are better ways to gain advantages. An example of it is in when we've domesticated other animals, when we compare domestic chickens with wild chickens and domestic dogs with wolves and domestic cattle with wild cattle, a universal trend in domestication is that the brain gets smaller. It's not that the first farmers try to make dogs dumber than wolves or try to make chickens dumber than wild chickens. It's that if you're in a barnyard, you don't need a brain as much as if you're scavenging around um, uh, out there. So, and the reason that the brain gets smaller in domestication is not that it was intentional, but it's a very expensive piece of machinery. Mm -hmm. If that piece of machinery is reduced, then there's more energy to put into chicken breast and into a dog that will wave its tail. <laughs> okay, what about the, the, the relationship between brain size and intelligence if we look at the, the uh, mam mammalian uh, uh, examples? Insofar as one can measure intelligence, yes, it does increase with brain size, but one has to talk about relative brain size. Um, a a law, large whale, a blue whale, might have a, I, I would expect a blue whale will have a larger brain than us humans, but a blue, but a blue whale um, doesn't have the complex social structure and can't design spacecraft as we, we humans. What's relevant is the brain relative to the size of the, the whole body. Well, the, the whale case is, uh, is, is an interesting one because, I mean, I, I can understand that part of the brain that deals with uh, the somatosensory and the movement would be related to the size of the body, but maybe other parts are, 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 are not so much related to the body. So the whale brain or the elephant brain or the dolphin brain may have areas of association, of, of frontal areas that in terms of gross size are larger than the human brain. You would, would you put significance on that? That remains to be established. Is it really the case that, that, that whales have some area of the brain that's relatively larger than, than the human brain. I'm not aware of any. Yeah, not relatively, but absolutely. Absolutely. In other words, relatively, it's surely not. Uh, uh, in, in the human brain, the frontal areas are uh, uh, relatively bigger in humans than in other, other species. I think that's clear and, and relative, perhaps, to body weight. But in terms of absolute size, I think other brains, in terms of the prefrontal areas or the association areas, are bigger in absolute size. So, is that it, you know, could that be a factor in uh, in 
either discerning a mental life of other creatures that may be very rich, even though they're not able to express it through culture, maybe through accidental facts that they don't have fingers, uh, or, um, or, or is mentality generated by something else? The brain certainly does us, does us good. That large brain does us specific good in many ways. Um, it's not just that we can figure out where the deer is running, but our brain serves to track our very complicated social relationships. So in a tribal society, every person knows hundreds of other people, but not only do you know those hundreds of people, you know them by name, you know their social relationship, you can tick off who is their first cross cousin who died several years. There's all this enormous stuff that has to be mastered. So it's thought that a function of the human brain may have been to master our social relationships. Mm -hmm. It's also to interpret things that other animals with slightly big brains can't interpret. For example, here's a real puzzle. Monkeys. Monkeys have relatively large brains, not as big as ours. You take vervet monkeys, the monkeys that tourists see in East Africa. Vervet monkeys, they've got a primitive language. They have a separate grunt, a separate word for leopard and python and eagle. So here's a smart animal with a big brain. A significant predator for vervet monkeys is pythons. They, the vervets have a, a word, a grunt for python. And you would therefore expect that this smart animal with a big brain, when it sees a python track in the grass, would figure that's a python and would get scared. No. The vervet monkeys don't make the association yeah. between the track and the grass and the python. That's what we humans do yeah. with the extra 1,000 cc of our brain over or above a chimpanzee brain. Yeah. We can figure out things that a chimpanzee can't figure yeah. out. And again, that's why you and I are having this conversation with chimps and orphan disease. How about comparing the uh, very close species to the human species, Neanderthal men, uh, or, whose brain was even bigger, uh, at least on a quantitative basis, than our brain. What, what can we say about that? That is, it's a big question about which I've speculated and published. So Neanderthals, um, you're correct that their brain size is at least as large as the brain size of us modern humans. And yet, you and I are sapiens, and we exterminated the Neanderthals. That implies that there's something qualitatively, quotes better so, something qualitatively about the sapiens brain that allowed us to survive and not Neanderthals to survive. People speculate about it. My personal speculation is language. That, that human language, um, it's complicated. It's not just a function of big brain, but you've got to have the right anatomy of your vocal, vocal tract, and then you have to have your brain circuits to, to have grammar and to interpret grammar and to remember all these corresponding rules. So Neanderthal brain might simply have been lacking some small areas, or those small areas might have been underdeveloped, with the result that Neanderthals could 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 grunt, but they didn't have prepositions and they couldn't infer causation. Whereas we, with a little more, few more grams, somewhere in our brain, we had prepositions and conjunctions, and then we could to do things about the Python track of the grass. Mm. And that would make, of course, the, all the difference in the world, and we could then destroy the other species because we could, we could be smarter in, in warfare. It wouldn't be just, just raw brute strength, because if it were raw brute strength, we'd have lost. Because we, because we had a slightly bigger or better small area of the brain, that gave us prepositions. <laughs> and it was prepositions that let us wipe out from the end of the <laughs>